let's go and import another DGN. I have a, um, a little rock layer DGN a few feet below this that I'm going to import. This time I'm going to open up a file called start2d DGN. Okay, so here I have a, just a blank uh, 2D DGN. And if I go and look at my models, that's the only model that's existing in here. So in this case, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to import a terrain from file. I'm going to grab that limestone DTM. And I'm going to use that same feature definition, that same um, boundary feature definition, just so I don't clutter up my view. And I'll say import on that. And I've imported the terrain, and there it is. But what it's done is you notice down in the message center, we get a message, import complete, a 3D model has been created in reference to your active 2D model. So I imported a 3D object, a terrain, into a 2D model here. So the program is smart enough to know that, hey, this is a 3D terrain. This actually needs to reside over in the 3D model. And so that's what it did. If I go back to models, and look, it actually created the default 3D model for me. It put the terrain in it, and then it referenced it back into this uh, 2D model. And there we see that I have a reference now to that 3D model that it created. So it did all that almost instantly when I imported the terrain. It's managing the 3D space for me. So if I switch to a um, 2D and a 3D view there, I can see that there's my terrain, it's in 3D, but uh, when I imported it, remember I was just in a 2D, but it, it was smart enough to know, hey, this is a terrain object, I'm gonna put that in 3D, I'm gonna reference that in here to 2D for me. So it's, again, it's automatically managing the 2D and 3D for us. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.